Welcome back, everyone, to the Play versus High School Championships. I'm still Hell Monkey Man. That is still Clutch Key, and you are still waiting on a game, but it will be coming up here soon as we'll get to go into it all in of a moment. And it's going to be Putnam City versus Deer Creek. It's going to be a wild one, a best of seven. And in case you don't know how best ofs go, well, you have to win four. That's pretty much how it is. And you don't want to go down three. That I think is uh, easily understood through any esport, any traditional sport. If it's a best of, you don't want to have to reverse sweep four in a row, which means after the first two, I think the third game then becomes the most important situation. But before we have to deal with any best ofs, it becomes si simply game number one. Yeah, game number one, it goes underway here and already they're trying to get that roll, roll as a rather is trying to already get that instant kickoff goal. Crazy Mojo starting off with a shot as well. And this is what you like to see if you're Putnam. You're li you like to see the little bit more of an up tempo here. Keep the pressure on as it goes to the other side. There's a demo on to pay for the moment. And well, I mean, you, again, you love seeing the pressure that's going on right now, but off the ceiling and then gets another bounce here. Scar might be a player to watch out for considering all the aerials right now. And the way it started off for uh, DCHS, I mean, they were getting pressured on by Putnam, but it seems like they've got some aerial advantages to themselves. It's, it's about getting control from your own back line and look how swiftly that Deer Creek is just kind of trying to run it down against Putnam. Putnam has had a struggle bus to get out of this back half and yet it has been very contentious for Deer Creek to simply move up field and then find those high mechanical motions. That's pay on target. That's gonna be first blood and first purchase in the first minute. Yeah, that's so good from Pay right here off the side of the wall and only needs one tap to do it off the front side of the car in the air. So Deer Creek showing us something good here for the, uh, their team right now. And that one nothing lead, man. I, uh, I, it's, it's, it's not devastating, obviously, because you have plenty of time to work with. But at the same time, right, you never want to be down to your opponent. So here's where Putnam needs to put on the pressure and Rollis is doing so. Has some boost, can't get the flip reset because you don't have enough boost to work with. Gets the follow-up top shell, bar down, gets out. Had a chance, it was open there, but it goes top right, bar down. Oh, that's a feels bad moment. Oh, it feels rough, especially considering that that was the slowest that we've seen Deer Creek be, and they were all stuck on their goal line. And now that may be an opportunity that doesn't come around you know, too often, a rarity, but they're trying to turn it into a frequency. Roll is under pressure as Scar goes screaming forward yet again. Oh, and they don't find a midfield connection. So Scar looks right now not only to be the player to watch, but to be the battlefield commander between themselves and Pei to just have ball control for the second minute, really winding down with the DCHS really winding up. Yeah, I mean, they have to find some kind of opening again if you're Putnam City. You had a chance, unfortunately, like you said, bar down, can't really can't really get for one of those. And now Viral Royal, nope, nothing in there. He already lose, loses the 50-50 there, but it is in the corner. But the thing I'm noticing here for Putnam is that they are running out of boost. They are not have to play a, a lot of boost with, and DCHS does, right? Deer Creek has that boost advantage for some parts of it, but it's all been staying up in the corner. It's all been staying up on the walls, and now it's finally down the middle where they could break this free. The more the ball stays in the corners, though, the less boost everybody's going to have to play with it. you got to find some kind of opening, which is right there. Rolis is able to score one, and I believe this is off a double touch here. Let's see. One touch, two touch. Oh, even gets another one off the wall. That's four touches to get this one in. What a play from Rolis. And that was um, permeated because of the rotation that got squeezed tight against Deer Creek. You had both Pay and Scar on top of each other in that left corner zone. And then a fantastic follow-up and finish to get it in front of a defender that looked to respond. Oh, Look at it crash the gate, trying to get back to it. But Rollis really securing the bag back here in this defensive half for Putnam City. It was a sprint to start things off in favor of Deer Creek. But since then, they've been limping. Yeah, we need a, uh, to, uh, whoever's working the graphics here, we may need a bar down counter for this, uh, for this <laughs> entire series. It's 1-1 one, one so far, and that's, that's, uh, some unlucky here. It could very well have been 2-2 two, two if not for the bar, if not for the crossbar. Had an open opportunity there, nothing there. As it'll go back to the midfield. Rollis is right there to try and see if they can capitalize on it to the left, but good thing pays right there for the save. Off the corner yet again. This time disrupted by Pay. So Pay's gonna get in the way of Rollis from the looks of it on the 1v1 situation. Up and away it goes. Here comes the fly, the dunk. No, off the bottom of the car and out. And so it'll go back to the corner here. Scar had a chance at it, doesn't have enough height to go for it. Viral Royal will take it over back to the midfield. 
And for right now, you can see the pressure being put on by Putnam. Oh, Scar gets the save just in time. And now it's going to be another chance that this can pay it up there. Yes, back to the corner it'll go. And you can see that pressure that both sides want to put on. It's just this ball is not finding the back of the net. It's not, but it's also been really gaining territory still in favor of Putnam City. They've really gained control over this midfield. And you were talking earlier about how they didn't have any boost. Well, they have been thieving the corners as well as that midline, which has really been spelling detriment for Deer Creek at this point. A nice just self-tick, but Rollis has been challenging much more often, trying to get Putnam City to roll forward and just hold that green grass and turn it orange consistently. That's a massive demo by Crazy Mojo. And Rollis is going to let this one go back to viral. We are left approaching the last half minute of play and pay and scar have really just become afterthoughts hammer go bonk now goes dead as Rollis sends him away this is where the craziness starts to happen with a minute left to go are we gonna see overtime maybe not scar <gasps> gets a shot in what a shot from scar turns it around and says hello we're here deer creeks up to one my oh my what a shot from scar crazy mojo that was hoping for more power they had to immediately recover defensively sent it off to the side and then as it was just a fadeaway jumper a teardrop in the opposite side 90 it becomes a deer creek with massive advantage less than 20 seconds to go that's an upfield run can oh. they win the foot race they make hammer jump but that's going to be a 50 50 a massive pinch that goes the other way that'll be icing on the cake and a dessert that's given over to Deer Creek. Five seconds left, they've got it up by two. Yeah, and they're gonna get the game as well, man. They had an opportunity, what a save. I think it was from Scar that saved that. Scar pay at the end there just to win the foot race, but man, you gotta feel bad for Pundum. They had it 1-1, one, one, and then all of a sudden, one go breaks the door wide open. And so they're gonna go down one nothing. But again, it is a best of seven, so you got plenty of time to try to figure it out. You got plenty of time to reset here, You've, you're only down two. It's not like this game number one was a complete blot. You got yourself maybe a little bit more stability, a little bit, you can get yourself a little bit more stability, I should say, but you can see some final scores on the board right now. Total shots, eight to five. And that's not, that's AK maybe not significant of a lead, but that still shows you that there's more pressure coming from that Putnam City. It's just that they can't find the back of the net. And I think the more pur purposeful part of that, it, it was three for five from Putnam City, a very efficient machine, but three saves, a savior medal going over to Scar. You called out their name. They were able to find great transitions upfield, found themselves a goal, and then making sure that everything that w was under threat of fire against their net, at least half of it was able to get sent away. So great looks. And all of the two goal difference here, Deer Creek had a chance, or rather Putnam City had a chance to really run it down and maybe take this game this was some points left behind and some moments yeah. that maybe as we evolve from game one to game number two you'll find that stability they may, may be able to actually walk away with this next one as well yeah i mean the strategy doesn't really change here for putnam i believe because they were playing at a fine tempo it's just that you they got saved a lot you just got to find some openings you got to find a little bit more of consistent passes right you got to just make sure that your teammates are there in center don't over rotate and obviously the one thing for putnam find the boost find the boost you were running out of it a lot and you got to make sure that you know you're ready and set for all these aerials that are coming your way from deer creek as we head into game number two right now and so this is the key right this is the start of it and for deer creek right off the gate you can see that they're going right for the boost in that scar maybe able to waterfall this down and oh again a missed opportunity from the top hey had it just nothing there so rollers will try to take it over 50 51 by deer creek but viral rollers they'll there to take it off to the corner maybe gets another touch nothing there and again it stays in this corner but nobody's going to play with boost it's a tough rotation right there as well as deer creek was getting squeezed yet again just really all congregating in the same side zone and this is now a chance for deer creek as they escape from that situation to force putnam city to have to burn through much of that precious resource just to escape they do take midfield deer creek Makes it difficult for Putnam to have an elongated offense, but a nice flick. Oh, it goes in and out, out outside the top of the outside oh post. And then again, they just can't buy their way through. They can't buy a goal. They can't buy a goal. That's all this really is. And look, Rolos is going up in the air, but with what boost, my friend? With what boost are you going up there with? You're challenging with nothing at the moment. It's going to go up and down in the air. They both demo each other, but they will spawn here in only a couple of seconds. Bay getting that corner boost with a 100 is very fortunate oh. for them. It rolls all the way over, but there's no follow-up there. They didn't expect that to get not hit. They didn't expect the misses there. Bay's going to try to carry this all over 
the opposite side of the field it will go Scar. 50-50 there. Another one taken up by Pay. Back to the corner it will go. This is the name of the game. Play the corner. Play for the win. And Rolis gets a nice save off there as it goes back to midfield. And right now it kind of feels like this game is going to go to the first one who blinks because they're making shots. They're just missing. And this one's going to go like this. top and out. It's, but that was off of a, a stellar challenge. They denied Deer Creek from having a just composite uh, counterplay to work up field with. And this has become Rollis versus Scar. Not just completely that they're the only ones playing, but simply they are the ones that get everything started for both of these squads. Without Rollis, Putnam City would have been scored on at least twice here so far in game number two. But it's been two minutes already. We got to see an early goal, and now we see one that's a pick of the pocket. Scar, you call him up and he will play. Yeah, you called out the scar, but the bigger note here is that there was an over-rotation. Three people on that right side. Nobody covering the net, especially with the ball that close to the goal. Nobody's there. And so Deer Creek taking rightful advantage of that courtesy of Scar. So one nothing on the board, and Putnam City's got to find a way back yet again. See if they can do it. This is a really nice shot. This could go all the way down. Oh, good thing, Kay. You're right there for the save. Workhorse just kind of the unsung hero right now between Pei and Scar has been Hammer Go Bonk as they had the initial feed taking advantage of that misrotation from out of Putnam City. Now Putnam City has to grind it out to get themselves tied up again. This seems like a very familiar situation being down one, but it's much further into the second game. Viral waiting back in that corner on the challenge, hoping it would go higher. That means that they have to get Scar keyed up. That's going to be a massive save. Instead, as Scar gets it from that crossbar and old Ironsides ends up being the MVP so far in the previous couple of games. What a pass, but Ammer just can slam it through. Oh, but Pay does. Scar could follow up on this, and yes, Scar does. Scar's doing everything. Scar's passing it down, trying to dunk pass it, then gets the pass off of Pay. Oh, it goes off of Rollis too. That's why it's at a perfect angle for it. I didn't see that part. Otherwise, it could have bounced off, and maybe somebody from Putnam City could have easily gotten in and try to help out with the save there but instead it's a two nothing lead for deer creek now this is where putnam city gotta put the pressure on you gotta find a way to break through this defense that's known as deer creek because obviously you're finding shots you just can't find the you just can't find a way to break through this intense defense that is deer creek right now so you gotta maybe maybe play a little bit more aggressively you gotta maybe play a little bit more rotationally if you will but scar I mean, this is ridiculous. Watch what Scar does here. This is just showing off at this point. I mean, if you're going to recruit, we were talking about recruiting anybody earlier. Scar's your guy. Yeah, I mean, obviously from end to end and taking advantage of viral when they just couldn't get a power flick, they got the ball to move forward. It went high and recognition, not just of where their teammates are, but simply when to go out and ball. That is a player that really can be able to fit into many a roster as long as you can get them rotating fine. And it seems like their game awareness at is at an all time high and knowing that they got to win, be able to take this dub, this championship right now looking pretty uh, advantageous for Deer Creek. Rollis, a time or two, has been isolated, and it looks like in each of the individual three players out of Putnam City have not been able to key up and play as a squad. Yeah, I mean, Deer Creek's playing out of their mind right now. I, I do not know how they don't get a top two seed, uh, unless the top two seeds were much better than Scar right now, because uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing Scar put on the clinic at this point, and right now, balls up in the air, they get at least the clear off for right now. Scar's going to get that ball, but they know they have to get it away from that guy's hand. So down to only a minute remaining on the clock now, and this is going to be trying to carry it over. But for Putnam City, I, this has got to be a reset at this point. You just got to regroup, reconfigure yourselves for the next two games because you want to try to tie up the series right now, but you got a lot of work to do if you want to do it. This is why I was talking about game one being a tone setter. There was so much pace and there was so much speed that was coming out of the Deer Creek half. And then number game number two being a trend setter. And that's now been a consistency. Three goals, both games here for Deer Creek to really neutralize Putnam City. Now game three is going to come down to a, a really important factor considering only about 20 seconds are remaining here. It will be a miraculous implosion if something were to occur. Trying to simply slow down the game, play into the hexagons, but clutch key, it will be now up to Putnam City whether or not that game number three will rend them an opportunity or else they're gonna have to rely on a reverse sweep and a best of seven yeah i mean you were talking about trying to slow it down a little bit you can do it against this team this team is way too engaged way too fast for you the speed is just there they're trying to add the exclamation mark it's going to go down but three nothing your scoreboard and real quickly i just want to see if what they stay on the screen here and obviously you get the hat trick if you're scar right you get it it's called prodigy but obviously you get the you get the hat trick there but again the shots 
on goal, totaling nine to six. That gives you a little bit more of an idea. And yet again, on nine shots for Putnam, six, uh, five saves there for Deer Creek, which obviously gives you more of it, a better idea of what this Deer Creek can do. And also Putnam just missing off the mark a couple of times. That's five for nine, which means it's just under 50, or it's just over 50% save, which means those other four opportunities just off the mark. Yeah, oh, that's wild. And they, they have, uh, it's been a Deer Creek who has been outshot by six. They are in a yeah. negative six shot differential, but a massive uh, differential when it comes to actually getting the goal through 50% in the, in the second game, 60% in the first game. So they're hitting what they got an efficient machine, well oiled. And honestly, that was, I think, the defining factor. You brought the ball upfield, but it was one touch plays. You, okay, we get one shot, it hits the bar, and then we have to retreat. They used all their boosts simply to get upfield. And they see Scar, they see Pay, they see Hammer, and consistently cycling on top of them and never get a free chance, a clearance chance. And that's where it starts saying, all right, bring me the physical, get these players off the field. But it's so tough to say, or easier to say, tougher to do because they got to match the speed that this team is bringing. I, I necessarily think, yeah, you have to try to match the speed, but they are matching the speed. It's just that Scar and the rest of the team, right? Scar and Pay are just making these great saves on you right now that they have no lack of shots. You said you said it yourselves. They are, they are not lack of shots. They're plus six on the shot differential. It's just that Deer Creek has had the better looks, has had the better shot angles on them, especially if you're Pay or Scar right now. And Pay's going to show you why, right? Off the top of the rope has a chance, but unfortunately, Rollis is right there. So what you would love to see from Putnam right now is that keep the pressure on, but maybe find a way to change your looks up a little bit because obviously these have been slow. Some of these have been slow. Some of the, you got to go maybe a little bit faster. Find a way to get those higher aerials because you know if you can get those higher aerials and you can get those passes off, you're looking pretty good. And unfortunately, they tried the pass, but nobody was there in time. Yeah, that, that one right there, you can see Scar already thinking that next step ahead. They put that to the sidewall and immediately waited. They did not overcommit. And then you see a Putnam player just kind of throwing themselves at it, hoping that they can work for the 50-50. But it's playing with control. Sometimes it's slow that is fast, especially in Rocket League, because you can just develop many of these just fast-acting plays. From end to end, bar to bar, crash the gate, hammer go bonk. We'll get this first goal of game number three. I think that's uh, their first goal as well in the series. I don't think I've seen them score. It was mainly Pay and Scar, but yeah, Hammer go bonk, follows in right in, goes cross, cross bar essentially, and I'm, I'm not cross bar, right? That's not the top bar, but obviously <laughs> bar to bar, and it goes right in, an easy one. They're not saveable. So for Deer Creek, you don't need to only score up in the air. You can score one on opportunities that Putnam City misses. So Putnam City's got to find a way to just tighten the bolts maybe a little bit more, and this is what I'm talking about here. Great pass from Pay. Scar's up in the air all day long for you. And so this is a great read from Pay. Scar from the corner getting the 100 boost. Just a little bit of a freestyle. Why not add on another one, sir? Oh, man. That's a great cherry pick position. Just went to the corner to go and simply grab that boost. But recognizing that they had a huge give by their teammate, why not turn it into money? Scar, a uh, little bit of quickness needed. They can't catch up to it. So it becomes a, mi a minimum a challenge upfield to the midfield. But we've not seen Putnam City cross that midfield line in a while without Deer Creek just immediately sending it on back pay. We'll have the gap filled. Guess who? It's Scar from the backboard and to Hammer. And nice one, not nailed through as Rollis finally gets a save and gives Putnam some time. Gives them some time, gives them some hope that uh, it's still within two, it's still within striking distance. If you can get one, still within some possibilities. But going down three is not ideal here in any situation for Putnam because you're already down two games to nothing and that three goal lead is just going to make it feel like that game's already over. So you want some kind of thing. They're misread the wall ball there. But fortunately enough, you have somebody back. You have somebody there. Now it's just going to waterfall down. Good thing you've got at least another save. I believe that was Rolas that clears it out. So now you've got three up in the goal. Pay's going to try to lift it over everybody. That is a 50-50 ball one by Putnam as they bring it all the way back. But look, this ball has not left the blue side in quite some time, Monkey Man. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure this ball is about to be repainted from all the blue LEDs. It's just going to become that same color and that same hue as we go now past the midway mark of game number three. Remember, told all of you guys that it was a best of seven. That means this game is very, very important for Putnam City. They cannot go down three without having the most arduous and just monolithic task possible and having a reverse sweep in a championship moment. And DCHS, Deer Creek, they have been so stellar at just making sure this does not advance beyond the second zone at the midfield. 
field. Hammer is going to be in support of Pei. But as soon as they have to go from fast to slow, they just aim for control. Rollless oh. has to be that shining light. And they do at least force a 50-50 here. Man, Rollis, if you had a flip reset, I saw the vision. You had a flip reset. Oh, that could go with that. Could could be your highlight reel right there. And Rollis again, it's just carrying this ball over. You're not near the goal anyways, but man, Rollis is kind of showing off a little bit here. Got got the fly, maybe got a, a little bit more of a warm up. It's just that well, the better warm up here is Deer Creek right now. Only 90 seconds left to go on the clock. Yes, you got a save. But again, the pressure is now on and it's going to be Scar that keeps it right here. Watch out for Scar in the highlight reel gonna be at least a clear up for right now back to the orange sign and it feels like it's been just maybe a couple of seconds since we've seen it back here that's the amount of pressure that deer creek is putting on as we approach 60 seconds left so far has been a wash pre-jumps galore dchs just taking it from anything that putnam city begins to key up that every single page in the playbook has just been blown apart and as they try to put the scraps back together with tape glue or anything else that just simply is sticking, nothing is sticking downfield. Deer Creek, another great find. They get that corner boost and then they're looking to advance and leave it for their teammates. They've been consistently communicating. The one-two connection between Scar and Pay is just so painful for Putnam City to overcome. Oh, it's not a 50-50 you want to lose there and it's going to be a goal. Yeah, that's a 50-50 you're going to regret. Scar gets the goal, makes it a 3-0 game, and essentially probably sign sealing and this is delivering it away. But the 50-50, what that does is that allows the crash on to happen, right? You win the 50-50, hammer go bonk, and Scar come in and just can put the deal, put the pressure on. And with that pressure, it means that you're not able to go for boost. You gotta stay there if you want to try to win that out. Scar had enough boost to get it over everybody. And now Deer Creek blowing this thing wide open at a 3-0 maybe even looking at a 4 now, but you can see the pressure, right? I mean, the one stat I wish Rocket League would have is kind of, you know, what they have in uh, FIFA or soccer, right? They have that possession zone thing. I would love to see how much percent this this ball has been on the blue side of the field because I believe it's been at least over three minutes that it's been there. Oh, yeah, it, it's been just consistently up. And this is one of the few times that you'll see it on the orange half in the hexagon. It's trying to make sure that it won't be just a complete clean sheet for Putnam, or rather for Deer Creek, but instead Putnam City will retreat to end it out and now they face the most difficult thing to possibly do in any series not just a championship they must reverse sweep a best of seven and for the first time in its entirety uh, going in finally into game number three here clutch key it is a shot differential in favor of deer creek and a massive one of that yeah uh that total by the way 12 to 2 uh five shots for your top two scores there for uh, Deer Creek and man oh man you could see at the end there too the saves uh, that was coming up 4-1-2 right that's a seven goal uh, at least save but I mean for the save to goal differential 7-12 to that's pretty good unfortunately you let three in so total of 10 out of 12 that could go in and that just shows you the pressure right that yes you finally get the differential on but for the shot differential at the very least if you're uh, Deer Creek, it went from in one game a minus six to a plus six. I mean, or rather for to a plus four, I should say. So, man, I mean, the swing in general here, Deer Creek knows that they've got the pressure on. If they can keep it on, they win game number four. But you said it, the hardest thing to do in the, in a best of seven series, reverse sweep. They got a lot of making up to do if you're Putnam. Putnam's just got to find the same thing, right? They, they had the shot differential winning. They had the shot differential in a plus six situation for them all of a sudden and now it's a minus four if you can find that rhythm back just gotta find a way to catch up to the speed catch up to this pressure that is deer creek right now because deer creek is looking more like the number one seed and probably going to be the last one standing here unless they can do something about it really might change up the entire makeup of uh, later semesters, depending on if these students are still gonna be here from the spring into the later fall. But right now, Deer Creek trying to just prove a point, maybe get themselves a near perfect sweep. The differential of goals scored, the magic number has been three each time in favor of Deer Creek. It is nine to one in total goals. That is huge. Putnam City has to find a first goal, I would believe, right now. And Rollis, I think, has to guide them that direction. They do get a massive demo, so this is going to be a thinned out attack, and Putnam City seems some green grass for once on the opposite half of the pitch. Yeah, Rollis had a chance there. You saw all three of them kind of just grouped up a little bit. That would have been your best opportunity to find something, but unfortunately, nothing there to talk about as they'll try a pass off the ground. Maybe this is an opportunity. No shot given, which is very surprising. I thought that could have been 
a shot credit at the very least, but this will go up in the air, waterfall down, good thing you've got at least a cover there. Somebody's gotta go back here, because Scar is on the prowl, looking to see if they can go cross country here. Nothing gonna happen for right now, but Pay's gonna try to turn around, Rollis is there for the save, back up to the wall, it'll go, but it'll stay still still stay in the middle. Good thing you had a little bit more of a, maybe of a distraction, if you will, Rollis is there to clear out, and it'll go back to the orange side, or rather midfield, before it's cleared back out to blue side. But right now, again, the pressure Deer Creek is putting on, you know they want to put the stamp on the championship right here, right now. And it's not like they can't score in buckets, in at least triples of this. They wait and wait and wait, and then they pick their absolute perfect moment to find a highlight real position. Viral waiting for an upfield swing, if they can, can find that connection, and Rollis will give their life to at least alleviate what could be a pressure cooker situation. Scar with control, and that's not what you want to be underneath, simply looking up and hoping that it doesn't come down. What a oh. save by Rollis. That was a sure thing. Rollis is playing on pure instinct at that point. You needed the time to hop there. You didn't have, I don't know if you had any boost to work with, but Rollis needed to find a way to stop that anyway, anyhow, because if that gets past Rollis, it's in guaranteed for sure. Nobody's there to rotate back. So good instinct there from Rollis, keeping Putnam at least in this game for right now. But we're pretty much halfway through and still nothing to be talked about except for the pressure that's on. Rollis is gonna try to carry this by themselves. Best opportunity right here, had a flip reset, but doesn't get it because the ball, wasn't up, ball was not underneath the car. It was in front of it, so you don't get a flip reset off of it. He had a chance at it as a roll right in front. 50-50, nobody's there, but it'll roll to the corner. Is this your time? Is this your chance? Crazy Mojo up in the air. No, it'll go back to the midfield. But man, you've got some openings here for Putnam. Just aren't able to take advantage of it as there's the opening for Deer Creek. And who else would it be but Scar to get the goal, the first goal of game number four. You feel, you feel for Viral right there, and that becomes a bump as they ran back upfield, hoping to help out in a recovery defensive rotation. Roll is left in the box, but it is just too punishing from Deer Creek. Crazy Mojo had seen a moment, a brief window of opportunity open and then shut tight before they could try and take some level of control. But now, with a ceiling reset, a flip reset gain just as well, Roll is hoping to do something themselves, create a heroic moment to simply Simply get Putnam City up field. That is the difference, but Rollis can't just do it all himself, has to key up his teammates, and it's been so tough to do at times. You know, Putnam City's got to find a way to bring themselves back to this game here. Scar's going to try to carry this all the way over and actually gives them a win of the 50 50. Oh, it's a good thing you got to clear there for right now, but the pressure that Deer Creek has been just amounting here is insane to think about. And now even look, Pay is gonna go over, send this back to midfield, send this all the way back. Rollis has to be kind of a hero, if you will, for Putnam City right now, because this has gotta be the last, this might be the last 90 seconds of your season right here. And if this is it, man, walking away from a championship down in a sweep is something you never wanna see. It's, it's not a fun uh, outcome, and it's not the best. Someone has to take an L here, but you don't want to do it in this way. It, you would only score one goal. Pay got a freebie, and that's going to be a dunk through. That goal diff is now plus 10, and that one could be the last needed for Deer Creek to put this championship in the bag. That might be the dagger. That might be the nail in the coffin, whatever other, whatever other sayings you want to put there, because <laughs> that is what Putnam City has been missing, right? That that kind of that double touch, that empty net, but you realize that you kind of need that empty net because obviously they're just going to keep scoring. They're just going to keep rolling on the goals here. Speaking of rolling it on, how about Pay adds another one, add another signature to that contract for that 4-0 lead here for the win in the championship because only 60 seconds left. Putnam City's got to find a miracle and a miracle's got to happen in 60 seconds. It would have to be a implosion. It would have to just be that all three players from Deer Creek disappear. And I've not seen enough demos to really advocate that that is going to happen. The magic Oops. number oh. has been accumulated and they're going to even make it more magical as a championship season seems to be in the works. The statisticians have stricken this in pencil, but they're starting to write over it and pen to make it much more permanent. Yeah, the, the, uh, the media people right now are kind of writing up their recaps already because you know that this is this is probably it for Putnam City. You had a great run. You had an awesome run to work with just that Deer Creek came to play. Deer Creek came to play and rip away at your hearts because right now they are playing with a fire that cannot be deterred, a fire that will not be extinguished because they, like, Pay has, has had a hat trick, right? You've, so earlier, Scar had a hat trick. 
The only one that hasn't had a hat trick is Hammer Go Bonk, but the defensive end has just been so good from Deer Creek that Hammer Go Bonk probably should be recognized as well. Is this a goal? Maybe it could roll right on in. It does, but that could just be one to take on home, at least for some reflection. A consolation prize to recognize that your efforts can at least turn into a success. And that's something that if you can really walk away with it, Putnam City will try their very best and just say that they weren't outclassed completely. But Deer Creek, they brought every bit of gumption, every bit of gut check, and every bit of worth to this best of seven championship. They're going to be taking an OSSAA finals found and sealed up by Deer Creek High School as they will be 4-0 sweeping taking this championship home for their high school and what a stellar and authoritative oh. and dominant performance it was scar that's your mvp right there yeah scar just wanted to put the exclamation mark onto deer creek's championship here in spring 20 in spring 24 man five to one and you said earlier right the magic number was three uh let's add on two to that why not yeah. they said so you saw the uh, final score there, and actually, Scar gets an own goal there, so maybe <laughs> technically a hat trick, if you will. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the day, though, you saw that uh, final shot total as well. Ten shots on goal yet again uh, for the Steel. I shouldn't say yet again because they had 12 last time, and another double digit is what I should say. Uh, shot opportunity there, and that just shows you, man. Deer Creek had the pressure. Deer Creek had the inside line. They knew what to do. And Putnam City, again, like I said, it's a great season overall. You land up in second place, nothing to be ashamed about, nothing to put your head down at all for. It's just that Deer Creek came to play and Deer Creek swinging at you, just throwing punch after punch after punch and just could not Muhammad Ali their way out of it, just couldn't dodge and duck and dive out of it. It's just Deer Creek just put on the pressure and that's the way it stood. Try to block every punch with their face and just hope to survive the onslaught and the barrage. But you know that that is a lesson to to come away with for some of these students. This is the first time competing in anything, be it traditional sports or re or esports. So it's a it's a life lesson and it's a tough lesson, but it's one that if you are these awesome coaches from both these programs, you're gonna try and go into the next season, the next semester, and to your students and try to you know really just level up with. But on that notion, they take that championship. We have another one around the corner as we go into the Special Olympics Unified Oklahoma Region Championship. You don't want to miss it. More play versus high school championships right around the corner.